Okay, everyone, it's Gordon Einstein, your Dubai crypto and blockchain attorney, continuing my series of hard-hitting, insightful, aggressive, no, not really, uh, conversations with people I like who have a lot to offer, who are involved in this industry and have unique perspectives. And I am very happy this time to be speaking with a friend of mine who I haven't spoken to directly for a while. I, I'm Alex, I miss you. I, I, I do miss you. I want you... I want you back in Dubai, but we'll we'll go over that. Uh, Alex is a very Germanic last name. Moira, Moira, yes, help me. Moira, yes. Moira, Moira. Thank you. Okay, you know, as a German person, I should be able to do this, but I'm not perfect. So, <laughs> Alex, I'm 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 happy, happy that you took the time to come on the show. It's kind of neat when a big YouTuber influencer like you takes the time with a budding, incipient, incipient <laughs> uh, YouTuber like me. So, welcome. Thank you, thank you. You're also an influencer, just not on YouTube. Somewhere I'm an influencer. I think I think I'm like an in-person influencer. But yeah, 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 exactly. Because you are at all the conferences that I would like to be invited to speak to. Well, what is what now? Well, you just had to say something. Now you've said it. So now now we can work <laughs> on that. I, I think that's not a. I don't think that's a hard sell. Um, so just before we dive into your background and kind of go into everything you're doing. You're in my favorite city. You're in Kiev right now. Yes? Yes, yes. I'm in Kiev uh, to pick up my dog to bring him to Phuket where I now live. Okay. Um, so, and yeah, I just the dog sitter just came back and said he, get an, he got a new rabies vaccine. So if I would stay here, I would be stuck another month I, until I can travel with him. So, but now I will get a pet relocation company to take care of that. And I will leave next week again back to Phuket. Oh, wow. So I, 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 I caught you at a magical moment. Um, yeah. Obviously, this is there's a lot going on in Ukraine. I think we all know. What, <laughs> what's your experience like in the city? So I, I, I said uh, already last year when you were here, you know, I, I told you the same thing. You know, as long as you are in the city center of Kiev, you are kind of safe, you know, so you don't hear a lot. You don't see a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Yesterday, this uh, drone attack where shrapnel destroyed a lot of buildings. I, no, two days ago. I did not hear anything about that. A lot of friends messaged me. Are you okay? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I slept like a baby. I did not hear anything. And then only this morning around 4.30 when I woke up for the first time, mm -hmm. I, I heard uh, the anti-flags. Um, the, the anti I, I heard them once, but it was like really, really super, super distant. It, it was like a really uh, dump sound like whoop. So that's all what I what I heard. So if I would have had my TV on or my laptop with Netflix or something, I would have not even noticed. I, I only hear it because I just woke up and like two minutes later that happened, you know. So but that was the only thing that I really heard. And here in the city center where the government is and everything, so on the side of Kiev where I'm living in, it's super safe because they need to protect the government building, which is like one kilometer. Uh, yeah, like. Through the air, it's a, it's a kilometer, you know. So they they, they have to protect that. Well, I I hope that uh, I'm under that defense. umbrella. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I hope the air defense systems stay strong. I think I I think yeah. my stance on who's in the right is pretty clear. But anyways, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you're safe. I'm also glad you're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll we'll go back. Hopefully, we'll go back there this summer under improved circumstances. Mm. I, I I will I will definitely come back in summer. Fantastic. All right, we'll, we'll we'll plan it. So, I always like to give a, always like to go into the background of the guests. You know, you, you're you're German, my Bruder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, where were you born? Where are you from exactly? Uh, I was born in a city called Remagen in Germany, and a little bit outside of Germany, this city is a little bit famous because there's a Second World War story to that city, okay. where the Americans uh, try to cross the bridge in Remagen. There's even a movie about it, the Bridge of Remagen, okay. um, and the Germans um, uh, destroyed the bridge so that the Americans could not cross it. Okay. So, so, but the movie is super old. I saw it like once or twice, you know. So I'm born in that city, which is like 30 kilometers away from Bonn, the origin, the old capital before um, the wall fell in uh, in Berlin. And um, yeah, I I grew up um, part of my life there. The other part of my life, I grew up in Pennsylvania in a city called Sanbury, which is close to Allentown. Oh so, my God. Billy Joel. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was because of the job of my dad. Uh, so I stayed there until I was a teenager. Then I went back to Germany. 
because his mission uh, stopped then in, in the US that he was working for, mm -hmm. uh, came back to Germany, felt always like in the wrong place in Germany because I had just a whole different mentality, how I was thinking, how I was, how I was approaching things and really? always felt out of place, you know, okay. so with, with the people there. Uh, so I had some friends, you know, I got bullied a lot in school because of my, um, yeah, different thinking. And um, I, I, I dropped out, out of high school with, without a degree at first because um, I didn't gymnasium. Okay. Yeah. So, so at first, because not, not because I was not smart enough to get a degree. I was just bored. It bored me. Uh, I, I was way faster finished with all the work that I got than most of the people. And I had most of the time, everything right. Mm -hmm. If I made a mistake, it was just like a fast mistake that I made. Uh, um, so just blipping, you know, and leaving some stuff out, you know, but I had the right thought process. So, and, um, and I was just bored, you know, I was like, why should I go if I, if I know everything, what they're teaching me, you know, so it makes no sense to me, you know, so, and um, I had then some friends, they were not so smart and also stayed out of school. And we went then to places like the German kind of Disneyland, you know, and went drinking there, <laughs> you know, so doing other, other things in that place and uh, had then like jokes, bringing pictures back and show them te the teacher, hey, instead of school, we were here, you know, stuff like that. So, but then later on, uh, of course, I, yes. So, but later on, um, I went then to an evening school, did mm -hmm. that in my high school degree. Um, afterwards, I went to university, studied first uh, history mm -hmm. because I, I always had a knack for history. And until I discovered after I made a degree, I cannot basically do anything with this. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I had to do something else, I got on the side into sales. Uh, was working in call centers and other sales jobs and uh, studied then um, that was marketing and event management. Yes. So uh, what I um, was learning on a university, uh, what is what was the name again? Um, there's like two big universities in Cologne for that. And they're really, really famous for uh, for the music industry. But, but uh, slipped my mind what, what it was, you know, so the, like, the name is German it's now, also, but unfortunately I missed all that growing up trivia and I'm having, yeah. to, I'm retroactively installing my German identity with YouTube videos. But when you, when you find yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I, there, there's one called SAP. Um, the, so there, there, for example, sound engineers, uh, go there to, to become a sound engineer. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there, there was the the school where I uh, the university where I was was uh, was next door, um, but I I I don't remember what uh, ah Pop Academy that's the name so it's called Pop Academy okay. so that's that's so that's where I studied this I was then um, booking bands and promoting bands on the side um, also I wanted actually to do this professionally because mm -hmm. I'm also a musician so I. Um, I have a, a master's degree also in music for uh, playing drums. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, because I started when I was six years old. Uh, and that is then the background why I went to the Pop Academy to do that. Uh, because I always like to hang out backstage with the bands and everything, you know, so an organized stuff. So I thought oh, it's cool. And then um, afterwards, I actually got an offer to be in a band in Paris. And that was the first time when I moved to Paris. And I uh, stayed in there for over a year until I had lost my job there that I had and I had to go back to Germany mm -hmm. and went into um, the unemployment office and they basically told me I'm overqualified for everything what I have. So uh, because of the deg degrees that I already have. So they said they can give me a job, but it would be like for me basically under my level, you know? So, and I, I did not really care. I just wanted not to be in the unemployment office, you know? And they said, okay, we have another option. You go back to university, study something else, you know, and um, and then you are basically off our list, you know. So, but we pay for uh, your housing and everything until oh, uh, your studies are done, you know. Else. So I'm like, yeah. So I was like, okay, and I was like, okay. What do you have to offer? You know, what kind of study? They had like a huge list, and one of the things that only really piqued my interest because everything else was boring to me. And I I was like, no, I don't want to work for like $2,000 a month, you know? Um, uh, and the only thing that piqued my interest was like um, uh, machine construction engineering. 
Okay. So uh, that was the only thing that uh, that really piqued my eye, where I said, "Okay, I have no clue about this, and it's sound, and I know it's it's hard to learn. So and, and it's a nice challenge for me, you know, to to try to get this degree. So I did this. I I got the degree, and then I actually um, found already Bitcoin at that time. So Bitcoin, just when I finished. Okay. So slow down. Slow down. When was this? So I finished the degree in summer 2015. Okay. And it, yes. how did you get to Bitcoin? Did, you did it um, there so fast. I missed it. How did that get? Is it blah, 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 Bitcoin? What happened? Uh, so around the end of my studies, uh, that was basically when I bought the first time Bitcoin. Okay. How? Why? And, 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 uh, why? So in 2010, um, that was the first time when I actually heard Bitcoin. Because I was on a torrent website where you can download like series, movies, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, at the time, the website was BitTorrent. So and, and there was like BitTorrent.xyz or something like this, whatever the name was. So and the, and the, there was in the header was a banner that said Bitcoin, future of money or something between that these lines. And I was like, what is this? I only know BitTorrent, but Bitcoin, you know, is, is it like BitTorrent money? You know, I don't know. So, and, and, I, and, I, and I clicked on it and it redirected me to the white paper and I read it and I was like, this sounds like a Ponzi scheme. I said, so are you kidding me? You were on a BitTorrent website and your whole life got changed by a banner click? Yeah. You know, yeah. How, you know how epic that is? <laughs> yeah. So that's that's how I found it, you know. Bro. So that's All how right. I found it. Oh. So oh. and and like like I said, when I when I read it, it sounded too good to be true, you know. So I was like, "What is this money out of thin air, like like the dollar, you know, but virtually and it's limited, so it it should only continue to grow, you know, and just go up in value over time." I was like, "This is ridiculous," you know. So I was like, "Okay, if it's a Ponzi, I'm early, you know, I'm really really early." Yes. before anybody else is catching on to this. So if it's a Ponzi, because I'm early, I will actually make a shit ton of money, you know? But when when, when it collapses, I maybe I made already like a couple of hundred thousand dollars and I'm already out of it, you know? So, and l let somebody else hold the back, you know? So I was like, okay, let's see. So I download the, the miner the yeah. software to mine Bitcoin. At the time you could still mine Bitcoin uh, with your CPU. Yes. And I, I had, um, a self um uh customized computer so that, that i assembled myself so and that was like there was like the top notch equipment in there that you could get on the market at the time mm -hmm. for for a gaming computer so i i spent like seven thousand euros for that computer only for the computer no screen nothing only the computer okay. so and um so and i knew my computer is strong enough to mine the shit out of the blockchain you know so and um so i downloaded the mining software uh, installed it and then um, it started loading and synchronizing and it went to 99.8% and never synchronized the last 0.2% for like three weeks and okay. I could not figure out why so and, and then then um, after three weeks I was like something is wrong here and I cannot figure out what it is there's nobody out there that can tell me what's wrong because this is super new nobody knows about that and I don't want to tell anybody about it because Maybe you know, so they're you're in a Ponzi scheme, this. and if someone else gets ahead of you, you're yes, exactly. You know, so so, so I was like, I cannot tell anybody about this. So if I cannot figure out myself, then I'm screwed, you know. Yes. So and I basically gave up. I thought at the time they they're stealing basically the hash power from me and using it somewhere else, and basically let me wait, you know, and nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought some some in some way I get scammed here, you know. So um so and then I stopped it. And at the time, Bitcoin was just under a dollar, just over a dollar. It was like under, it was at the time for sure under a dollar 20. Okay. So, and um, so, and then I forgot about it because it did not work. And then when I was in Paris uh, in summer 2013, um, then it was the first time in the news that Bitcoin hit over a hundred dollars. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, WTF. You know, I was like, what did I do? You know, so I missed a hundred X, you know, and, and it's three years later and it's still there. I, and, and then I started already thinking about it. I was like three years and this thing has, uh, this thing has not imploded yet. 
you know, so maybe it's not a Ponzi, you know, that was the first time where I was thinking, may maybe I'm wrong, and it's not a Ponzi, you know, it's $100, it's still here, it's strange, you know, so and then I tried again mining it with a laptop, with a MacBook at the time, not knowing that you needed then dedicated miners already, you know, so, um, so I tried again for three weeks, did not work, and then I was basically done uh, with sorry, it. Just be clear, it didn't work or you didn't have a successful mine? um it, again it got stuck got stuck interesting yes again same thing it got stuck again so but then when i asked later some people that that know a lot more about mining than me they said yeah it got stuck because you uh, you can you, it was technically impossible to mine with with a laptop then you know so and there, there was something in the software that let you not synchronize when the software recognized the power was not there to mine it you know so they basically Okay. They basically gate kept you away from the blockchain. You know, and they don't if, bother to tell you in the beginning. They wait till you're ninety nine point nine percent synchronized, and then yes, the rest never synchronized. Give you a non error failure. Nice. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like it's yeah. so. And 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 then at that time, I was basically done then with it. You know, I was like, f that shit. You know, it's not working. I tried it twice within the span of three years. Mm -hmm. I tried it each time for three weeks. You know, so and it's not working. So something is definitely wrong there. And th there was no exchange yet at the time where I could buy. So it was really hard also to get for me Bitcoin at the time, besides mining it. Mm -hmm. and, and then I was like, okay, it's not for me. Something is wrong here. I cannot figure it out. Forget about it. You know? So, and then in 2015, during my studies, I had a roommate mm -hmm. and he only told me this like around the end of my studies. He was always laying on the couch in our apartment and he was making four hundred to a thousand dollars a day, and one day he told me that because I never saw him going to work or something. He was all day at home when we are not in university, but he had money, you know. And I was like, "What are you, what the heck are you what, doing?" What the hell? Yeah. So I was like, "What are you doing?" You know. And he's like, "I'm I'm exchanging currencies." You know. I was like, "What are you exchanging?" You know. And then mm -hmm. he told me like, "Uh, yeah, virtual currency." So I exchanged perfect money, U cash, a Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin. Uh, against cash, you know, and, and I said, Bitcoin I said, go away with that nonsense, you know, and he's like, why? And I told him, yeah, it did not work for me. I wanted a wallet and I wanted to mine it and it never worked. I explained him the story. I said, if you want a wallet, give me your iPhone in five minutes, I have a wallet. I said, if you give me a wallet in, in five minutes, I give you 20 euro, you know? So and he said, okay, wait, two minutes, I got a wallet, you know? I said, okay, here's a 20 euro, you know? <laughs> Yes. So, but he was nice. He he sent me then fifteen euro back in Bitcoin. You know, so that I had already some Bitcoin, and then then I then I was like, okay, what what is your site where you, you are exchanging? And he's like, Alex, I would never give you that website. I said why? He said uh, he said because you you will put me in the dust. You know, if I give you the website, so it'd be because oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, that, that's a curious comment. What is it about you at that point? not knowing Bitcoin that would put him in the dust because he, uh, so he knew that, that I also would start exchanging, you know, so on the website, that's why I'm asking uh, that I, I was asking, you know, so he knew I would go and exchange and basically become a uh, concurrent. And he was super lazy and he knew I'm not a lazy guy, you know? So I'm like a bloodhound. If you give me something where I can make money, I, I, I will uh, chip away from it until there's nothing, there anymore you know so so and, and he knew he knew that that i will basically um take all his business away you know so if he let let me on that platform so and until this day he never shared with me that platform you know <laughs> so now he, even he knows my story he knows everything he's still not giving me that website where he did it wow so um good so, but it's fine you know I, I i did not care i found my own way uh of exchanging a bitcoin against uh fiat Mm -hmm. um, build a business out of that. And, um, when I was working in a, in a fabric after my studies, um, it was like six weeks or seven weeks that I was at the job. Uh, that was like the moment where I was making three times more, um, with Bitcoin in my 30 minutes lunch break than what I did the whole day at work. So, and, and that was like my aha moment where I was like, why I'm still here, you know, why I'm still doing this. You know, I have a free shift free shift system where I work in uh, one week in the morning, one week uh, late shift and one week night shift. 
you mm-hmm. know so and then then it was switching again i was like why i'm doing this you know uh, working with these hot machines burning me all the time you know on the hot pieces that i have to move around so i i was like screw that you know and then i was like okay let's let's wait let's wait another month you know i i made already double what i uh, make the whole month here at work let's wait another month let's see what happens you know so uh, because i like to have kind of like uh, consistency in this you know before i would quit the job so Excellent. and then the next month was was uh, was more than what I had the month before from the exchanging. So my business was growing, and then then I was like, okay, now it's enough, you know. So I quit. I go back to Paris, you know. So and uh, the reason why I went to Paris was I went to in um, to an internet uh, cafe. Uh, so where were you? Where were you before Paris? In Germany. Okay. Fantastic. And then what was your what was your transition year to Paris? So I was one day uh, before work or after work. I cannot remember. I went to an internet caf- coffee where, um, where uh, in in the city where I was living at the time, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and was accessing from there the internet to to do to go on to continue my exchange business. You know. So and then uh, the owner of that internet co- coffee he saw me that I was regularly coming there, and he was then just occasionally asking me what I'm actually doing there all the time, you know? So because I was like more or less every day there for like an hour and then I left again. Yes. So, and I said, Oh, I, I'm, uh, I have an exchange business. He said, Oh, what are you exchanging? I'm saying, yeah, I'm exchanging Bitcoin and uh, some other currencies. He said, Bitcoin, ah, drug dealer, drug dealer. Uh, and then I was like, okay. Yeah, I was like, okay. Uh, and then I explained it to You're him. You're like, and I said, no, no, but it's a great idea. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 no, I was directly like, no, 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 I'm not like using it for that kind of stuff, you know. I don't know what my clients do with their Bitcoin, but I'm not touching it for any drugs, you know. So and he's like, yeah, okay, okay, you know. So and then, but but that got me thinking, you know. I was like, okay, what will happen if somebody that buys Bitcoin of me gets caught buying drugs with it? You know, so and they can trace it back to me because I bought it from an exchange where I was KYC, you know. Yes. So and in Germany, it was really stupid. Uh, and I, I give you a simple example. In Germany, if we live together and the Internet connection is running on my name yes, yes, and yes. you commit fraud, where's the police coming first? Uh, obviously, they're taking me I, first I before they take you, you know. So so and um, and and exactly that reason led me to to say uh i have to get out of germany you know so because i it's like a ticking time bomb for me what the clients do with the bitcoin you know until the police are showing up you know so i also i I don't want that problem i go better to a country where they understand what bitcoin is and where these kind of situations will not actually happen to me so and the closest country to germany that was uh, really bitcoin friendly uh, already in 2015 was was france so and that's that's why I went back to Paris because there it was like if I show the police that I sold the Bitcoin to somebody else, they go after him and will leave me alone. Yes. So so and 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 that's all I wanted. I just wanted to go on with my business and wanted to uh, have my tranquility, you know. So I'm uh, and and can be at peace with my business, you know. So and I went into Paris. I went to a German lawyer. Uh, to set up the company there and ask him at what point does it make sense? You know, I said, look, I make now every month more or less 10,000 euro with this business and it's growing. You know, I built a client base in Germany that I'm still serving. I built here now in Paris a client base uh, that that I'm serving. Uh, So how to go about it? So at that time, it was really nice that France was um, uh, um, a zero tax haven for Mm -hmm. crypto. Because they didn't know how to tax it. So, and when you had a business in crypto and it was purely crypto and you did not put your profits back into fiat, which I didn't because I put it always back into crypto, it was zero, zero percent. So I, I had no tax on my business. Nice. So, and I was like, this is amazing, you know? So, because I was already afraid like 20% here, 10% there, you know? And it was like, no, it's zero. It adds up. Amazing. The, 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 the other, uh, uh, positive side of that business was um, that because I was German, mm-hmm. as long as I did not register with the town hall as a resident of uh, of France, they, they they had no clue that I was in the country. So what whatever money I spent, th- there was no trace of it at all okay. that I live in the country. 
I, my, my apartment was fully serviced. So there was no energy bill, nothing with my name on it. Uh, I had a bank account, but everybody can get a bank account if you have an address in France mm -hmm. um, as a European citizen. So technically, I, I was a ghost for the system there. You know, with uh, the only thing that they knew is that I have a company in crypto, which, which was not taxable. Okay. So they uh, so at that time they could also not come after my personal income, so which they normally could have, but they but they couldn't because they did not even know that I exist in France. So and um, yeah, very cool. Yes. So and I I did this um until late 2017, um that business um yeah until late 17 because then I met some friends in uh, in Paris and we uh, were all into crypto already uh, and one of our friends was working for Societe Generale for the bank and after I explained to him Bitcoin he actually quit his job there and he was uh, at, at a really really high position in Societe Generale he was not working like in a normal banking branch he was working in the headquarter at La Défense in the in the uh, in the financial district of Paris so uh, so he was basically in these all super secret bank meetings that no nobody else gets in. You know, he had that kind of position. And when I explained him Bitcoin, he quit his job because of it and uh, went then into business and uh, with uh, me and one of my friends. Wow. Yeah. Epic. So we, we tried then to launch our own uh, token at the time. Um, and uh, we separated uh, hostily. Uh, the year afterwards, like it was like three, four months afterwards, mm -hmm. because the guy from the bank thought they don't need me uh, because the project that we had was partnering with uh, a development company and they took a stake in our company, of course, mm -hmm. for providing the development uh, of the project. And then um, he got the stupid idea that they don't need me anymore, you know, so but I was the brain behind that's not very you know, nice. I, you're the one who gives yeah. him, like, you change his life and all of a sudden he's like never mind goodbye yeah exactly so and i i was uh, in israel at the time teaching people about crypto mm. uh because i needed money because i i was spending all my time on the project mm. and not on my exchange business anymore and somehow i i needed to make money because money was flowing out into the project but nothing was coming in yes. so i went to israel for two weeks to to work there and during my time there, they basically hostily kicked me out of the project. So I came back to Paris. Mm. I, I had no apartment at the time anymore. Uh, was living with my ex-girlfriend at the time in the room of her sister because her sister was abroad in London. Mm -hmm. And basically there, um, there grew, grew again a little bit of capital. Uh, it was like something like $70,000 that I uh, racked up in like two, three months. And uh, then, um, then I was like, okay, now uh, I will start the project again, my way and without them. And I will do it a little bit different, you know? So, and I had then like, uh, I had a public blockchain and I had a private blockchain for like B2B. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, when I told everybody about the B2B part, uh, there is um, a project, uh, maybe you know what, Bancor? Yeah, of course. Yes. yes. So, so I, I was talking to the Bancor guys because they are French, they are all in Paris, you know? So and 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 one of the, the way, advisors. Do you, do you speak French? Yeah, fluent. Wow, you're, so, you're awesome. So uh, you speak at least German, English, and French, and you got some Russian. You got some Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah, Russian. Yes. Good man. Four languages. Man. So uh, and and one of the advisors um, at Bancor, he is now working for Swissbox uh, because I asked Alex from Swissbox if I can. Uh, borrow him for something you know for some side work you know but uh, he uh, he said message him but he did not reply so it, but it was fine you know so uh, so Alex uh, snatched him up from Bangor um, and, and he, Alex Fazel. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he's a very good guy I, you know what I'm, I'm gonna show him this video <laughs> that's cool oh yeah, yeah. you can, I, you I, can. Like, so, I like Alex a lot you, yes, you Alex me too. Guys are cool yeah 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 we're super okay, cool go on go on I'm, yes. I'm, so, yeah. um, so, so, and and this guy has a PhD in uh, quantum mathematics. So, so, so he's uh, he he is like a one hundred percent analytical guy. So, and I explained to him um, in a sit down uh, brainstorm meeting with my developers what I want to build, and he said, Alex, this is brilliant. You know, he said, forget about the public blockchain. You know, he said 
it's a nice add-on, you know, so, but technically you don't need this, but this B2B thing that you want to build, this is insane, you know? So, uh, so, and that's why I, I went with it. And then what happened was uh, I could not keep up with the builds that they were mounting up uh, and could, could not find any investors, even with his help. Um, and uh, then I had to make a decision. I was at the time traveling uh, every weekend to Ukraine because I had a girlfriend here in Kiev. Mm -hmm. And I knew how cheap it was to live here in Kiev uh, um, because I was already almost for a year coming and going. Sure. And uh, I made an, like a deal with myself. I said, okay, if it comes to that point where I have only 5,000 euro left, um, I have to make a decision. Do I put this into the project and hope that it's going to run, you know, and basically uh, will then work out of a McDonald's to have free Wi-Fi, you know? So I was basically living yeah. in my office in the building where the office was because uh, I had actually two offices. I was working at WeWork during the day and in the evening, I went to another office, which was like a close community, kind of Soho house style, where you have to be accepted to be to get an office space. And um, there in the basement, because it was an old, uh, how I'll say this again, um, there was an old, um, yeah, basically it, it was like something like an old whorehouse, a French old whorehouse that they had, you know, so okay. uh, like from from the from the 17th, 18th century. So in, in the basement, they, they had a shower, like a proper shower, you know, so and around the corner of the shower was a small space. They call it like yeah, but what's the, happened the, in that shower, Alex? No, nothing. I was just taking a shower there. So I and mean, then, before um, you, the way the way you describe that house, I'd be a little bit nervous. Ah, me. yeah, like two hundred years ago, for oh, sure, something fine. else. Okay. Fine, <laughs> so, fine. but uh, around the corner from the shower was a small corridor. Uh, mm -hmm. Then around the corner of that, there was like a small niche um, um, where where they had put a mattress where you can basically take a nap during work, you know. And that's where I slept in the night, you know. So and then I woke up at six before the cleaning lady came that she doesn't catch me there sleeping, you know. So and and then I went back to we work, you know. So and I did this for like I don't know for four months, you know, waking up at six, go uh, take a shower, go to uh, go to we work, come back at after ten to the other place, you know, then they had also like a private cinema. Then I was watching like Game of Thrones or whatever in the private cinema, ate something out of the microwave, you know, so, and then, then went to sleep and rinse and repeat that whole thing, you know, until I ran out of money. Amazing. So, and uh, yeah. So, and then, um, so then the day came where I was sitting in the office uh, where I actually slept. Sometimes I was there also during the day and um I had like 5,600 something left. So I, I paid 600 something dollars for something. And I was like, okay, shit. Now the day is here. I have 5,000 left. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I, I don't want to risk it and live out of a McDonald's. You know, I was like, I pack up my things. I go to Ukraine. So, and that's what I did. I, I, I took my dog at the time, a different one that I have, uh, that, I, that, that I have now here. Um, went, went to Kiev, did for two weeks, nothing. So I rent a cheap apartment and like, this is like 10 minutes away from me up uh, Pashersk, you know, more, yeah. more up where I am. Um, and for two weeks, I was thinking, I was like, what should I do now? I, I'm, I'm like 30. With 30, I want to be a millionaire, but I'm dead as broke. You know, I have like $5,000. So uh, I, and I don't want to go back, right? you know, I, I don't want to go back to a normal job, you know, yeah. uh, nine to five. I, uh, because I. I tasted too much of uh, already of entrepreneurial freedom. You know, I was like, I cannot go back, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, what should I do now? And, and then I was thinking, and I was like, hey, wait a second. While I was working on my project and I was at WeWork, um, I was trading on the side, but I had no clue about charts. You know, what I was reading was the order book. And I understood that between opening and uh, opening of the US and opening the Asia session, mm. there, there was an arbitrage opportunity, you know, so I saw that, you know, so there was something nice about my engineering background that I had that I could analytically understood uh, and understand what was happening yeah. in the market, you know, so and, and I saw, okay, if I sell at the US open and I buy at the Asia open, there I can actually make money. And that what that was working for couple of months you know when i caught on to it it was basically close to the end of it but i still made some money out of it and i was like hey 
I was not so bad at this, you know, maybe I should try this, but now with a more serious approach, you know, and actually understand how to chart and everything. So I, so I looked around, tried to find courses, crypto courses, which did not exist and did not know that I could, I could apply Forex knowledge to the crypto market. So I was like, no, I want a crypto course, not Forex. So what I did was I, I started watching the really old crypto YouTubers now, you know, at the time that were around. There, there, there was not, uh, not Carl the Moon. Names in here? Yeah, so the, uh, one of them that I was watching at the time was Ivan on Tech was around yep. at the time when I started. Uh, there was Crypto Zombie just started. Mm -hmm. And um, Tone there, there were two. Sorry? T Tone Vase, maybe? Yeah, Tone Vase also. Tone Vase was also there. So, uh, so but uh, there, there, there was nobody else, basically, you know, there, that, that I would have trusted at the time. So mm -hmm. I watched all these guys uh, and watched their TA. And when I did not understood anything, and then I was pausing the video and Googling it, you know, so, and to try to make sense of it, what I was seeing, and then applying it by myself. You know, I was, while they were charting it, I was charting it the same way that I could understand how it works, you know. Mm -hmm. So then after two months, so I was already putting money on the line at the time. After And after two months, uh, I became profitable and I had like a five years uh, wealth plan, mm -hmm. so to speak, you know, so how, how I would want to get to a million dollars within five years with trading. So mm -hmm. and my first goal was when I arrived in August 2018 in Ukraine was like, OK, I have 5000. I want to have 25 by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. If I have 25 by end of the year, next year in 2019, I want to get to 100. That's and very then modern. I want to get, yes. So, and, and then I want to get to 250. Mm -hmm. Sorry? I said, that's very modest. I hope this story ends differently. Yeah, totally different. Okay. So, and then like 2020, I wanted 250. And then the year afterwards, 500 to a million, you know? Yeah. So that, that was my game plan. So I, and little did I know that I hit almost 200,000 by the end of the year. Uh, when I arrived in Ukraine. So yes. from 5,000 to almost, I had like a tour. When I was sitting down with my friend, uh, my other German friend uh, in Nove late November, yeah, it was, I remember it was late November, uh, just before his birthday, I had $180,000. Mm -hmm. So from August to November with 5,000, I made a, from five, I went to 180. So, and that was for me already crazy. You know, I never had so much money in my life at the time. Mm -hmm. So, and um, I think, where, where is it? Yeah. Poor, poor little German kid. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh my God, your uh, dog is so cute. Yeah. Wait. Uh, I, I want to show you something which should be here on this phone, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Should um, I put up the so I, I should still have it here. So what is going on here? Um, where is the, this picture? No, it's not. I just realized I know that I have it was your initials. How, how stupid yeah okay yeah 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 it's my initials so i'm pretty sure because this is here really old phone that i have here right now there's super old pictures on it i'm pretty sure on this phone i have that picture uh so what happened then afterwards in early 2019 so i started to leverage trade at that point mm -hmm. uh and i was going nuts on leverage you know so i would never do this again but i was trading like uh, basically with all my money that I had on 50 to 100x leverage on BitMEX. Yes, bro. Yes. So, and uh, and it gets crazier, you know? So I was going with the train from Kiev to um, to Kharkiv and there, 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 is a, there, there is a blind spot on the yes, way where you have almost no internet. So, and I was on the train opening trades on 100x leverage on BitMEX in, in that spotty place where you almost have no internet you know so and then try to close the trade and profit with that super lag and i actually managed to make money on that train i made three thousand dollars on that train ride i i know the exact train you're talking about i know the exact trip you're talking about because i did it last summer and you're, you're crazy yeah that, so so that was really crazy you know i i i admit that so but then uh, while I was making more money, I got also more modest, you know, with my leverage and also in general with my trading and slowed down with it. And now we are getting here to the pictures, um, to the year where I should have it. So where is it? I know I have it somewhere here also, otherwise on my iMac, but I know I should have it here on this phone. I'll just try to find it for a second here. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are getting close. So it was definitely here somewhere. And I know that I have it. So this that was just before this. That's when I made it. Mm -hmm. So basically what what I what I did was um I needed to see like in front of me we were burning all, all time. That... you got to show me Yeah wait ah me. I found it Okay so I found it. so and, and and I can go outside take another picture just without the money that people understand this is like really my place you know so I I, I turned down the light that you can see it What am I looking at Oh wait let let me uh take the brightness away Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. So this I, is five hundred thousand dollars. I assume it's all hundreds, and not like a hundred on top, and then one. That's a... No, no, no. It's all hundreds. Oh, uh, that. Uh, so that was, how does that feel? But that, that, uh, that, 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 it feels surreal to have so much money, you know. So, but on the other hand, I looked at it. I was mm -hmm. like, five hundred thousand dollars looks not so much. You know, when you have it in front of you, you know, it's yeah. not that much when you see it in front of you. I, I was expecting not double. Much. Yeah. So I was expecting when I cash it out, it would be double, you know, from size wise, you know, and, it, and I had like all these stacks in front of me. I was like, this is half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. That doesn't look so much, you know, and then I understood also, I want more, you know, so this is not enough. So, but I actually cashed that out in a really stupid moment. Mm -hmm. It was just before the COVID crash. So, um, so, so when, uh, so I, 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 um, I knew Bitcoin will go lower and my problem was when I cashed it out, I cashed it out on Thursday and Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the market was crashing and Sunday when I wanted to buy back, no exchange I was available to, to put it back. So I had, uh, so the people that I was exchanging with, they took Sundays the day off always. And I did not know. So, so I could not put the money back into the market and buy back. So I had to wait until Monday. And when I put the mon uh, by Monday the money back, I lost $10,000. So uh, it was still okay. It was not it's crazy, not you know, but I lost. Yes. So, but I, I could have made, if I would have been able to put the money back on that Sunday, I would have made 25 Bitcoins. Bro. Yeah. That's a really so good that, that was okay. annoying. Uh, Alex, I, I love you, but this, this, this is going long and I, I want to, we can do another show, but I, I, oh, yeah. I want to move to your present day activity. Okay. You're influencing, you're trading. I mean, I, I love you and this, you're jazzing me up. You're motivating me. Which, <laughs> I'm serious, which is one of the benefits of the show. It's like, I get to talk to yeah, great yeah. people and, you know, I'm working hard on getting out these videos and trying, working out, trying to be healthy and everything. But you know, when I talk to guys like you, but testosterone and adrenaline runs. So thank yeah. you. Sir, I'm not no the only problem. one to say that. But give us today. What are you doing today? Yeah. Influencing yeah. So, whatever else. Yes. Yes. So right now I, I have my own um hedge fund where where I trade for my clients um on uh, on their accounts. So I'm not taking custody of their funds. I basically take over a sub account, you know, where I can only trade but not withdraw. Uh, and trade for some of my clients that I I know from way way back, when I when I basically started trading, um, I have my YouTube channel. Uh, I hit yesterday thirty five thousand subscribers, so my YouTube channel is growing right now, uh, in this bull run nicely. You know, so also my views are going up, so I'm really happy about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the YouTube channel is the same name as my logo, AM Crypto, uh, for really everyone that wants to look it up. To all your stuff, obviously in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, so, so my 550 and, uh, subscribers will definitely come to you. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still professionally trading. I lost a lot of money uh, in the last two years. So I'm making it now all back, which is fine. You know, so it's always up and down, you know, so, but you always come higher up on top than the previous time. So for me, it's fine. Um, and, and I'm sorry, yeah. just, out of, just out of curiosity. 35,000 is a good number. I'm sure you're going to grow. Yeah. What, what do you attribute your YouTube success to? Uh, so just the last, let's say the last three months, I have basically, I think I have maybe been wrong once in one of my videos. 
mm -hmm. once about where the market is going. Okay. So I, 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 otherwise I was always on point, you know? So I told people, um, don't think that Bitcoin will drop under $60,000. Uh, $60, you know, I'm not seeing that, you know, uh, worst case, it's going to stop at like uh, 61, something like that. Yeah, where did we, did we went? You know, 6,800, you know, so $200, you know? So, um, and then, then I also said, when we went back up, I said, if, uh, the last couple of days, if we not break 69, we will come a little bit down again. What do we see since yesterday? We come back down a little bit, you know? So, so um, it's it's just that that I know how to read the market, you know, and put this in my video. And when you are highly accurate and people make money out of your videos, you know, so I think that is the, one of the reasons why my channel is successful. Good job. And what, what do you call yeah, yourself? Thank you. Influencer? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really like I the title you. influencer, you know, so uh, I, I also don't like really like KOL. So when people ask me what I'm doing, I tell them, yeah, I have a YouTube channel. I'm a YouTuber, you know, so I, I don't call myself an influencer. Yeah, I, well, I, I don't mean like those Kardashian people. I mean, just, I think you, Yeah. I think people look up to you. I mean, I, I know that you, when you're in Dubai, you, you had a following here that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. the people congregate around you. I know, yeah. I know, you know, I've met your lawyers and, you know, I've talked to some other of your friends and they're, they're good people. You, you seem to form a group, which is neat. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, yeah, in, 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 good. Sorry, uh, in, in Dubai, the funniest thing that ever happened to me, uh, where people recognized me, was uh, when I was uh, driving with a girl in uh, in my Ferrari to the point, and, yes. uh, and 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 there was somebody coming up with his car in a small Kia, you know, and put uh, uh, pulling down the window, and it said, "Hey, I watch your YouTube videos," you know. So I was like, "Really?" He said, "Yes, yes, I'm subscribed," you know. I was like, "Oh, nice," you know. Wow. So while I was driving, you know, and of course that was a nice nice uh, uh, gimmick for the girl, you know, it was like, oh shit, this guy is famous. You know, people pull up next to him to tell him that they watch his videos, you know. Now, little, little, little does she know that you paid that guy $10 to do that. No, I, unfortunately not. Just kidding. <laughs> so, but but this, this was really funny, you know, so that uh, I was like, this is crazy, you know. Yeah. Uh, when, when am I gonna see you back in Dubai, exactly? Um, if everything goes according to plan, then I should be for blockchain life and token 2049 in Dubai. Oh, soon, in a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Two, three weeks. Yes. So okay, I'm still yeah. not 100% yes, sure. I'm hosting events and you're coming, my friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out uh, some things, you know, so, but um, if, if it goes well, then, uh, then I will come. Okay. That, that's great. I, I, re I really hope you do. Um, and then... Can someone, let, let me ask you, can so you were pretty early and you applied your engineering knowledge to trading and you've been around the block and maybe you had some luck and maybe you had some skill and you learned the charting and everything else. Do you think it's possible realistically in 2024, especially with this state of the market, for someone to start trading and be successful in a way that matters? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I that's also what I tell people. I say this is the last year where you can make it. You know, no matter at what point this year you come into the market, you can still make it. But if you come next year, it's over. It's too late. So you have to use Why? this year. Because first of all, a lot of regulation will come after this bull run into the market, mm. way more than what we are seeing right now. Um and now with all the ETF flows that that we are seeing and institutions coming in uh, into play here uh basically the the market gets more liquid and the more liquidity is in the market the, the heavier it is to move the price you know so percentage wise not dollar wise you know we we can see after this bull run 10 20 thousand dollar swings in a day but maybe bitcoin is four hundred thousand dollars so it's like a four per, four or five percent move you know mm -hmm. so you will not see any more these lavish moves uh, over a couple of weeks uh, where Bitcoin goes yes. like 50% in, in like three weeks, you know, you will not see this anymore. So, and, uh, and, and that's, that's why the crypto market will become like the stocks market in terms of uh, moving percentage wise, you know, and extracting huge amounts of profit out of the market. So if you don't have deep pockets, when this is happening, you, you're going to be left behind. You, you missed it. Interesting. Now, if you're comfortable doing it and I'm not holding you to it 
end of two, end, you know, December 31st, 2024, how much is Bitcoin? Over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, December 31st, 2025, where's Bitcoin? Start of the bear market. Which means? So, uh, 31st, so Bitcoin will hit the top, um, I think around October, November. Mm -hmm. So could be around 240-ish by on end the way down. Time. Yes, so, but th this will be not the top. It's uh, the top is somewhere else. This is uh, like on the way down already. Really? Okay, that, that, that's yeah. very interesting. And I'll, even, I'll even push it out. I'm, that, this is just a guess, but we, end of 2026. Um, it will be under a hundred thousand dollars again. Wow, that's very bold. Bear market. It will be bear market, bro. <laughs> that's a big bear market again. Yes. Do you you know you know the stock to flow model? You know what I'm yeah. talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Does that hold water? Is that right, more or less? It is more or less right. So I actually have to check if he now included in it the ETF flows and took this into account because he's updating it all the time. You know, it's not like that he put it out once and then just stick with it. You know, he's also updating it. Uh, that's also what I saw over the last couple of years that he's adjusting it to certain circumstances. And now with the ETF flow, I, have to, I actually never went, went yet to check if he's taking this into account, but it's also only two months, you know, that ETFs are there. So... I um I actually did, I did not check this yet. If he took it into account into the model, you know, and it's plotting now the dots a little bit different, then then we can stick to it. If it's still the in in my mind current version, um, I think that 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 it might not apply so much anymore to one hundred percent. Interesting. And if he if he takes the ETF into account, I think I think the result is the. It gets more aggressive with the, the pricing. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be more because, aggressive. But what I've seen, having checked it recently, and I'm not sure if I'm looking at the legit one or just someone's reference to it, I think I'm seeing by the end of 2026, they're calling a million dollars per per coin. I, I don't see it. So let let uh, let me blow your mind a little bit here. So okay. um so 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 I I went uh, when um, Bitcoin started to drop a little bit. Um, mm -hmm like a week ago, uh, I, I was like, okay, so BlackRock wants to allocate 5% of their whole portfolio into crypto. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let's let's see how much uh, AUM do they have right now? Okay, it's $10 trillion, 5% of that, $500 billion. How long do they need at the current pace that they are splashing money into the ETF to allocate the, uh, all their clients? You, you know what, uh, what, what comes out? Years. No. No. Uh, um, okay. So so they they are speeding up the pace, you know. So that's why it goes a little bit faster. Okay. So the the, the date that the, uh, let, let me put it this way: the months that come out when they are fully allocated mm -hmm. is October, November next year, exactly where the top will be. Interesting. So you're so saying because November, November of twenty five. Is... Yes. So. So, so in 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 uh, in the in the fourth quarter next mm -hmm. year, everybody will have the portfolios fully allocated, and in, into the ETFs. So, but until then, the price is going insanely high. So, but what do you think are going to do the people that came first into the ETF and were allocated? That that is now the smart money dumping on the on the on the dump money that came late to the ETF. I would say that that would normally be true, but given the fact that there's only so much Bitcoin. Most of it is lost and less is being produced yeah. because of the happening. I am not, I understand your point, but this is not a Ponzi. This is a finite yeah. good that eventually yeah. is going to rise. And I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but you, you're better at this than I am. So I'm not, I can't argue with you. But yeah, I, you, 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 you have to think about it from this perspective. These are really rational long-term investors that are going into the ETF and really conservative with their uh, with their profit taking also. Yeah. So when, when when they see that they pull within two years, 24 months, that they made five, six, six X on their ETF allocation, do you really think they are not starting to sell? 
You know, I, I don't know because they could be the guys who sold Nvidia a year ago and now feel like <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. look, I, 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 I wish I would have bought some Nvidia actually a year ago, or even you you know when when I actually would have bought some uh, at the uh, at the Corona crash. It was like under ten dollars. What a beautiful time, you know, and Nvidia yeah. making graphics cards, not, not anymore. Yeah. You know, their, their yeah. new chip is like between 30 and $40,000. It's a double yeah. die. It's, it's amazing stuff. It's just, yeah. Give, give you a whole nother show about that. I, I, Alex, I need, I need you. I need to have you back on, but we're, we're kind of hitting. Yeah, no problem. This is great. I, I, I'm going to, this will come out in like a week and a half or so. We'll, I'll prepare a description. We'll include all your socials and links to your website and everything else. Cause I, I think, you know, if if my little YouTube channel can send some for some people your way, I think that's great for the people. You don't need it, but I think people need to understand what you have to offer, your trading strategies, your attitude, your you know, your you know, you, maybe when you make mistakes, but you come back stronger. It's like it's it's kind yeah. of cool to watch. And I I'm inspired by your story. I'm inspired by your mobility. I mean, you know, Germany and France and Ukraine, and here you are during a war, and you're going to Phuket, and you're going to maybe go to Dubai. It's like <laughs> You're you're a man in motion, so you're, you're yeah, yeah yeah yeah. I, I I'm always somewhere, you know. While I was in Thailand, I was two weeks also in Vietnam for a visa run, you know. Sure. Living in Ho Chi Minh, in Saigon was also nice. Wow! All right, brother, it, it was a pleasure. I stopped the recording. <laughs>